All right, boys. Today we're going to revisit an older subject, and that is decapping stock truck injectors. Primarily because I saw a new way to do it. Someone sent me a video of a nice, neat way to do it, and I wanted to try it. And second, because I have a surplus of these things laying around in all different part numbers, and I want to know what they flow. There's only one way to do it. So that's what we're doing today. First ones I'm going to do today is a set of Trailblazer injectors. Not Trailblazer SS, but the inline six cylinder. I have, I think, 10 of them total, and I'm curious to see what they flow. Also interesting, they are taller, so they would be like a direct drop in for an LS1 intake or the ones where you need the 60 millimeter height. And again, just curious what these part numbers flow. We don't have a lot of these done and a good baseline. and. I'm doing the same thing I always do here, and that's pop the O-ring off, and then I pry at the cap, and once I get the cap off, we decap. Now, what I saw was a guy, he sent me a nice video, and he puts the injector into a socket, and he spins the injector around while he grinds down the tip, and it puts a nice even edge on everything. It also makes it much faster and I was able to once I got the swing of this I was able to do these things in like three seconds and I'm hoping on video we see the cap flying off now one thing that's funny here is this he recommends a 12 point 13 millimeter and that was really tight and it was actually beating up the o-rings on the top of the injector what I later move to while I'm doing this is a half inch I believe I show it on the video I'll make sure I show you guys but the half inch 12 point worked beautifully and did not damage the o-rings or fit as tight and here I am doing some trial and error obviously there's too much movement at the end of this so stabilizing it with my fingers worked pretty good and then you'll see as I progress and learn how to do this on my own holding down near the tip there is definitely the best way and I'm like, how long should I do this? What should I do? How well is this working? I also end up moving the camera and zooming in so you can get a better view. You can see it's starting to taper the edge around the you know, pinch weld, whatever you want to call it. And I'm spinning that guy up, spinning. I'm making sure I'm not going too far till I figure out my bearings here. Nope, not yet. Angle looks okay. Keep trying. And I have the audio turned off for the video because the grinder is so loud and I'm running my heater. Yep, tip's gone and there's a nice tapered edge. Ta-da! All right, so here we go, dumping out my bag of spares. The Trailblazer ones and regular truck shorties. Gonna go through them and just See how I like this process, figure out the best way to do it, and then just get all these things done and get them all flowed. And if they're junk, I can throw them out. If they're good, I can use them. And if they have good or bad flow, I can let you guys know. And we can do a nice follow-up and details video after Eric Durr gets all the facts back to me. Here is where I am like, man, I'm kind of beating up the O-ring. Maybe I should try a different size 12 point socket. You can see there's the uncapped tip and I have a red socket now. I believe this is the half inch and it just fits nicer, still works fine. We just blender that thing in at like a 45 degree angle. I walk it around a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Shit, man, that's a nice job. I'm pleased with that. Yep, checking everything out. O-ring looks better. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What do we got here? Half inch. That's right, sirs. The half inch 12 point socket is the winner for pretty much all of the injectors I use today. All 14 millimeter O-ring, you know, truck, GM, factory injectors. 
Congratulations on making it to the zoomed in portion of today's video. You lucky sons of bitches. Here you can actually see what's going on. I'm blendering that guy in nice. Oh, you can see that cap fly off. Did you see it? She gone. Nice work, if I do say so myself. Here we go again. Most common size, like 25 to 28 pound, early truck injector. Put her in the half inch 12 point, 45 degree angle on the flap disc. Well, what do we get? A missing cap. And as I progressed through the day here, I started to, you know, hold the injector straight over the grinding wheel so you could get a better view of it. See that cap and zing, there she goes. Dang, I knew that would pay off. Look at that, no cap, nice smooth edges. Let's see that again, shall we? Cap, zing. Had to eyeball that one. Ta-da! Look how nice and clean that looks. Peep that Milwaukee LED light. And one more time, there's a freshie. Fire up the sanding disc. There goes the ring. And there goes the cap. Flying. Yeah, looking good. Looking mint. Here is just a high speed montage of me just organizing and taking the clips out and putting them away and organizing and all of that happy horse shit you normally would see. I just wanted to speed it up so it wouldn't take all day. And now we're moving on to a slightly different style injector, the flex fuel ones and the old school regular truck. Man, I just have a ton laying around. So the flex fuel one has the four holes in the cap. You can usually identify it. It's a little bit thicker and it's got the four hole cap and it's got a smaller plastic O-ring keeper on it. I'll show you the difference right here. Regular truck, most common one I would say. Yeah, show them. Still cold to shit out. You can see my breath, even though I have the heat on. Yeah, I'm looking for the part number and it's on the side of the connector. It takes me a little bit to find, but it's in there. Yeah, can't really see it. Good luck. Good luck, boys. <laughs> so here is the new, not the new, but the new to me, Flex Fuel four hole injector and it has a smaller cap. And as I did this throughout the day, I was like, man, there's gotta be an easier way to get these caps off. If you guys could let me know, I found, I'll show you, it's later in the video. I have like a really small 45 degree angled set of needle nose and they did a better job for sure. But you end up beating up the plastic head a little bit, but as, soon, as long as it snaps back on and doesn't fall off, you're good. You can hit, you can beat it up a little bit. So we're gonna lube up the O-ring and smash it onto the half inch 12 point, same one, fits great. And we're gonna blend her off the other cap. You can see the spot welds on this cap are actually up in the side of the injector. Not on the face of it, but all the way up there in the edge. Test my spin, crank on this flap disc, brace the bottom of the injector, Give her a little spinny spin. Zing! Man, that one comes off nice and neat real quick. Shut off the flap disc. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, nice work. Oh, you did a nice job. You're a master technician. Just another angle here. That's the cap. And that's the injector without the cap. Pretty neat, huh? And here again is just some sped up workflow of pulling the O-ring, popping the hat, 
putting it in the nice little Milwaukee zing zinger and blazing the hat off and putting it back together and putting it in a bag. Here again is just some more sped up workflow. Blitzing the heads off of those things, putting them away, cracking open another one. Just more of the same. Here's one in real time. Extra lube. Pop that injector on. Give her a little China Whirly gig, Harbor Freight flap disker. Milwaukee milling bit. What an excellent team, that's it. It literally took that long. I was starting to get very good with it at the end there. As you can see, I have those tiny little needle nose 45ers. Those were really starting to work out great. I'll have to recommend those if you're gonna do a shitload of them also. Especially for the smaller cap on the flex injectors it made it much easier. And that's pretty much it. This whole batch of all of these guys are gonna go out to Eric and we're gonna recap and see what models flowed what and everything else. Eventually, I'd like to put the decaps, the flex fuel ones, they flow around 88 pounds roughly. I wanna put those in my truck because those would be perfect for the 600 horsepower range on ethanol. I can save the 210s for a more capable project instead of just kind of wasting that much injector in my truck. And you just load them up in a box and ship them to Eric and we will see you in the next episode.